Dear all, welcome to AS Educational Channel. In the previous lecture, we have seen how to solve the networks by using the Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's current law was the algebraic sum of all the currents at any node or at any junction is zero. We have considered the equation of the current where we have stated the current in the form of voltage upon resistance. Now in voltage law, the Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of all voltages around the closed loop is zero. That means, so if this is a closed loop means set of branches which are forming the closed path, right? So this is say R1, say this is R2 resistance, so this is R3 resistance, say the current passing through them is I. So if I is the current passing through this all resistances then I can say that I R1 that is voltage in current into resistance that is voltage across the resistance 1 plus voltage across the resistance 2 that means I into R2 plus voltage across the resistance 3 that is I R3 is 0. So that means summation of I R is 0 that means the algebraic voltages, algebraic sum of all voltages in a closed path is zero. Now, one thing I would like to tell you that while if this is a problem, I'm going to write the equation of the network. Say this is R1, resistance is R1, say this resistance is R2, say this is minus and this is plus, say this is 5 volt. Now, start from the battery. Always say from always see from where the current is entering into the battery. So from negative side to positive side, the current is entering the battery. So we will write here is a minus 5 volt. The remaining terms will be positive plus. So whatever the current we have assumed, say I1 is the current we have assumed. So I R1 plus I R2 is equal to 0. So this is the equation of this loop. Again, I want to make it clear that it's not necessary that you have to consider minus 5 volt plus IR1 plus IR2 is equal to 0 but you can also use the methodology like that if my we are if we are traveling from negative to positive then there will be a voltage rise so we will write here as a plus 5 volt so again from plus to minus we are going so there will be a voltage fall so there will be minus 5 I R1 and again from this one also minus i into r2 so again you can treat like this also but in solving the problems we will use this methodology that means if the current is entering from negative we will assign its sign as a minus and for the remaining loop we can take directly signs as a positive so we will solve the problems by this same problems which we have solved by the Kirchhoff's current law we will solve the same problems by using the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So this is the problem which we have already solved by using the Kirchhoff's current law. The same value of resistances, same value of the uh, battery sources we have taken. Now see there are the two loops. So there will be the two currents we have to assume. So there are two loops means let us say for first loop current I1 we have to assume and the second loop let us assume I2 as a current. Now we will write the equations as I have discussed previously. So traveling from the battery, see this is I1 which is flowing in the network like this. So traveling from the battery, see from negative to positive we are going. So current is entering from the negative side. Therefore we will treat it as a minus 6 volt. So this will be loop 1 equation. Now we are writing loop 1 equation. Current is entering from the negative side. So this will be minus 6 volt. Now remaining terms will be plus 10 I1 plus 6 into. Now see, for this 6 ohm resistance, I1 current is also entering and I2 current is also entering. So now what we have to do, if we are considering the equation for the first loop, we have to treat that the first loop current is greater than the second loop current. So then we can say I1 minus I2 here. Because I1 both the directions of I1 and I2 are in opposite direction. Uh, I2 has to be subtracted from the I1 and this is equal to 
0. For the second loop, this i2 will be bigger. So here will be i2 minus i1, right? So we will solve this equation. So minus 6 volt plus 10 i1. So the, what is this 10 i1? This is the voltage. What is this 10 i1? 10 into i1, that is current coercion. That means resistance into current. This is also a voltage. Similarly, current flowing through the 6 ohm resistor was i1 minus i2. That is also a current. So current into resistance is also a voltage. So algebraic sum of all voltages is 0. This is the Kirchhoff's voltage now. So minus 6 volt plus 10 i1 plus 6 i1 minus 6 i2 is equal to 0. Or we can write minus 6. I shouldn't write here voltage. A 6. Now see plus 10 i1 plus 6 i1. That means 16 i1 minus 6 i2 is equal to 0. Or this I can write as a 16 i1 minus 6 i2 is equal to 6. I will call this as a equation number 1. Now we will write the equation for loop 2. Now loop 2 equation, see, we will start from the uh, battery. So see, current I2 is entering from the positive side and leaving from the negative side. So uh, as it is entering from the positive side, from which side it is entering, we have to write here. So plus 4. Now this will be, these terms will be plus. The remaining terms are always plus if we are assuming this methodology. Then this will be 6 into now. We are calculating for this loop. So we will treat that I2 is greater than I1. So again the current which is flowing through the 8 ohm resistor was I2. So this gives you 4 plus 6 I2 minus 6 I1 plus 8 I2 is equal to 0. Thereby we get minus 6 I1 so plus 14 I2 plus 4 is equal to 0 or minus 6 I1 plus 14 I2 is equal to minus 4. So this is our equation number 2. Now we will solve equation 1 and 2 simultaneously. So if we solve this equation 1 and 2 simultaneously, so that is 16 I1 minus 6 I2 is equal to 6 and minus 6 I1 plus 14 I2 is equal to minus 4. You get the values of I1 is as 0.315 ampere and I2 as minus 0.159 ampere. If we solve it simultaneously, we will get the values. Now, after getting this value, now we will calculate, the question may be calculate the voltage drop across this 8 ohm by using Kirchhoff's voltage law. The problem may be calculate the voltage across this point. So we are not mentioned the names, but previously as we have mentioned, we will same, we will do the same as in Kirchhoff's current law. So let us say this point has voltage VB, this is VA and VC. We know VA is 6, we have already seen in Kirchhoff's current also. Now let us see, by using this methodology, can we find the voltage at point B? So what is the voltage at point B? So voltage at point B is nothing but the drop across this uh, 6 ohm. And what is the drop? If we consider this as a loop, then what will be the drop across 6 ohm resistor? And the drop, voltage drop across uh, B will be 6 into I2 minus I1. If you calculate in this way, we will get Vb is equal to 6 into I2. Our I2 was uh, minus 0.159 minus uh, our, uh, this one, I1 is 0 0.315. And if we calculate this, this comes to be minus 2.84. Uh, so this is what is the voltage. And the same voltage we have already obtained in our Kirchhoff's current law problem in the previous video. Now same we have done, same problem we have done with the help of Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now see if the voltage across the 8 ohm is asked then what is the current flowing through this 8 ohm that is nothing but 8 into I2. So voltage drop at voltage across 
8 ohm resistor can be found out by R into I. So I was I2. What is our I2? I2 is minus 0.159 and this will be equal to uh, minus 1.272 volt. Similarly, we can calculate the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor. So if we want to calculate the voltage across, voltage drop across 10 ohm resistor, then how we do R into I. So what is our R? R is 10. And what was our I1? I1 is 0.315. So this will be equal to 3.15 volts. So in this way, we can solve this problem. In my previous video, we have solved this problem by using the Kirchhoff's current law, that is nodal analysis. And in this video, we have solved this problem by using the Kirchhoff's voltage law, that is the mesh analysis. So, we will see now the second problem uh, of this Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, this is, now see this is the second problem. We have solved this problem in Kirchhoff's current law by using the nodal analysis method. Now, we will solve this problem by using the Kirchhoff's voltage law or mesh analysis method. Now, let us mark the points. Say this is point A, this is point B, this is point C and what is this is point the D. Now let what might be the question? The question can be calculate the current through 10 ohm resistor, also calculate the power through 10 ohm resistor or the question can be anyone calculate the current through this 4 ohm resistor, calculate the power across this 4 ohm resistor or in any resistor we can calculate the uh, current as well as power as well as voltage drop also. Now we will solve this problem since this is a mesh analysis so we have to solve this problem by Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now see there are the three loops, say one loop one, loop two and loop three. So there will be definitely three currents and if there are three currents, there will be the three loop equations. So we will assume the currents, we can assume the currents in any direction. So we will assume this is the direction of current. Let us say for this loop the current is I1. Let us say for this loop the current is I2. Let us say for this loop the current is I3. Right? So I1, I2, and I3 are the currents. Now, see for the first loop, we'll see the direction of the current. The direction of current is like this current is coming, this will come to this, and it is entering from the negative side. So therefore, this will be minus 25 volt. Now the voltage across 5 ohm that is current is we have assumed that is I1 so this will be 5 I1 plus this drop across this 2 ohm resistor that is 2 into I1 minus I2 because previously we have already discussed that the loop for which we are making the calculations that current has to be treated as greater than the other loop so there will be the different directions of the current that means I1 is coming in this direction and I2 is coming in this direction so they will be subtracted from each other and this will give you the value for 0. Now this is loop 1 obviously this is loop 1 equation right we have to write all the three loop equations so if we simplify this we will get 25 of course no volt should be written here so 25 plus 5 I1 plus 2 I1 minus 2 I2 is equal to 0 or we can say this is 5 I1 plus 2 I1 that is 7 I1 7 I1 minus 2 I2 is equal to so there is no I3 term but here we are assuming all these currents so we will write here as a 0 I3 plus or minus that doesn't affect plus 0 I3 is equal to what comes to the 25. So I will call this equation as equation number 1. See, 5 plus 2 that is 7 minus 2 I2 plus 0 into I3. Note on I3, therefore we assume that 0 I3 is equal to, it transferred 25 from that side, so it will come to be uh, 25. So this is the equation number 1. Now we will see, solve for the loop 2. So our loop 2 equation will be loop 2 
2 equation. Now in this slope 2 equation, we are traveling from this direction. So current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor is 10 I2, right? See, again for this 4 ohm, the current flowing is I. We are calculating for the I2 loop. So we will consider here, for this loop, we will consider I2 minus I3, saying that I2 is bigger. For this loop of 2 ohm, we will say I2 is again greater than I1. So for this loop, we will calculate as I2 minus I1. Now 4 into, we will write I2 minus I3, sorry, I2 minus I3 plus this 2 into, as we are calculating for the loop 2 and the current coming is I1 and this I2, so difference in between them will be treated and this equals to 0. Now if you simplify this, this comes to be 10 I2 minus 4 I2 minus 4 I3 plus 2 I2 minus 2 I1 equals to 0 or after simplification, uh, sorry, here is not 4, 10 I2, here will be plus 4 I2, 10 I2 plus 4 I2 minus 4 I3 plus 2 I2 minus 2 I1. So if you see, this is 10 I2 plus 4 I2 that is 14 I2 plus 2 I2 that is 16 I2. So 16 I2, hmm? so what is I3? Minus 4 I3 minus 2 I1. So it will be, uh, see, this is mm, minus 2 I1 is the only. So I'll write here minus 2 I1 plus 16 I2, I3 also, right? So what is the value of I3? I3 is minus 4 I3. Minus 4 I3 is equal to 0. This is minus 2 I1, right? So this is my second equation that is minus 2 I1 plus 16 I2 minus 4 I3 is equal to 0. Now we will solve for the loop 3 and for loop 3 we will travel in this direction. So I3 is the loop current. So current flowing through the 2 ohm will be 2 into I3, right? Now this holds, so from source it is entering from the negative side. So we will write negative 50 plus, remaining terms are always plus, only source we have to consider. That is our methodology. So plus 4 into, now see I3 is bigger for this loop than I2. So for this loop there will be calculation like this I3 minus I2 and this will come to be 0 or we can say 2i3 minus 50 plus 4 into i3 minus 4i2 is equal to 0 or c we can write 4 plus 2 that is 6i3 at right? 6i3 so this is minus 4i2 at right? minus 4i2 obviously this is the same and there is no i1 term so i will write here 0i1 and this is equal to 50 if the 50 is transferred from this side we will get sign changed and this will be my equation number 3. Now we will see this problem by using the Kramer's rule. In my previous video I already explained what is the Kramer's rule and how to solve the problems. So we will consider all these three equations. We will write the coefficients of this. First we will write the equations in the uh, one above the other. So first my first equation was 7i1 7 I1 minus 2 I2 plus 0 I3 is equal to 25. My second equation was this that is minus 2 I1 plus 16 I2 minus 4 I3 is equal to 0. And my last and third equation was 0 I1 minus 4 I2 plus 6 I3 is equal to 50. 
Now we'll solve these equations by using the Kramer's rule to get the values of I1 and I2 and I3. Once the value of I1, I2 and I3 are obtained, we can find the power through each resistor or we can find the voltage drop across each resistor or we can find out uh, the answer of our question. Now let us uh, see, uh, first for this we will write delta. Delta is nothing but the coefficients of I1 and I2 and I3. So this I1 coefficient is 7, here it is minus 2, here it is 0 and it is for I2 coefficient it is minus 2 and this is 16 and this is 4 that is minus 4 and this is 0 and then this is minus 4 and this is 6. So this will be the delta value and this delta value comes to be see 7 into I, I, I hope you know how to calculate the determinant. So for this value comes to be 536. Now we will find the value of delta x and how to find out the value of delta x we have to just replace the constant column in place of I1's column. So this will be 25, 0 and 50. So this we will not call it as a delta x but we will call it as a delta I1. Right? I1. Delta I1. So 25, 0, 50 minus 2, 16 minus 4, 0 minus 4 and 6 and this value comes to be 2000. 400. So, how to do it? We have to just replace the column of constants that is 25050, 25050 in place of I1. So, we will get delta I1 and delta I1 will be nothing but the determinant of these values. Now, we calculate the delta I2 in the same fashion. So, how delta I2 can be calculated? For calculating the delta I2, you have to replace the column of I2 by the constants, but we have to write the original equation. In the original equation, we have to do. We cannot do this in this equation. The original equation, our original equation was 7 minus 2, 0. Now we are replacing the column of this I2 by the constants that is 25, 0, and 50. And this will be the return as it is. 0 minus 4, 6 and this delta I2 comes to be 1700. 1700. Similarly, we can calculate the value of delta I3. How to calculate the delta I3? Again, we have to write the original determinant. We have to replace the column of I3 by the constants. So, the, this will be remain as if it is. I1 and I2 columns will remain as if it is minus 2 will be this, this will be 16, this will be minus 4, then this will be, uh, this column will be replaced by this 25, 0 and 50 and if you calculate the value of this determinant, you will get the value as 5200, 5200. Now, we will calculate the value of I1. So I1 is delta I1 upon delta. So we have found out the delta I1 as uh, 2400 and our delta was 536. So its value comes to be 4.477. Now I2 will be equal to delta I2 upon delta and our delta I2 was 1700 upon 536 and this value comes to be 3.2757 amperes amperes so this is not 2 but this is 1 3.171 and i3 is delta i3 upon delta and that will be equal to 5200 upon 5536 and that comes to be 9.70 amps amperes. 
Now see, our question was calculate the current through 10 ohm resistor. We have already defined that the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor was I2. So I2 means 3.171. And this is the answer which we have found in Kirchhoff's current law also. So therefore our answer of our question is therefore current through 10 ohm resistor is 3.171 ampere therefore power will be hence power is i square r i square r so that means 3.171 square into 10 you can do and you can write the answer so this comes to be 100.55 watts right 100.55 watts now they may ask you find out the current through the 5 amp 5 ohm resistor and find out the power across this resistor so current flowing through 5 ohm resistor was i1 and what is the value of i1 so it is 4.477 ampere so this i1 square that means 4.477 square into 5 will be the power dissipated across the 5 ohm resistor. Similarly, they can ask you find out the power which is dissipated across 2 ohm resistor. If power across the 2 ohm resistor needs to be calculated, then we should know what is the value of current that is flowing through the 2 ohm resistor. So, value of current that is flowing through the 2 ohm resistor is I3. So, we can calculate as I3 in square into R. So, what was the value of our I3? I3 is 9.7. So, 9.7 square into 2 will be the required watts of power across the 2 ohm resistor. Similarly, they can ask you any question and we can find out the current through any resistor as well as we can find out the power across any resistor if it is asked in the examination. Further, uh, one thing they may give you here current source. So, if current source is given to you, then you can directly calculate the uh, current you know the, the I3, then there is no need to calculate for this one, but we have to calculate I2. So, the, in place of this uh, voltage sources, they may give you the current sources. Accordingly, if the current sources are given to you, then you can directly put the value of the currents so, and write the loop equation. This was regarding the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, similarly in the next video, we will see these two problems, how they can be solved by using the superposition theorem. Thank you very much.